David here with FigBood on pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you uh, what I feel is a very interesting themed pen from the brand Kilk. Um, I don't own a lot of what I would categorize as themed pens, uh, but this is one that ties into a personal interest of mine, so I find it especially interesting. And that would be the Kilk Camera Laterna. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the camera Laterna. I'm going to talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about the pen. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, thanks go out to Kilk and one of their North American retail partners, Goldspot Pens, for getting this pen out to me for review. Um, I've mentioned this in previous reviews, but Kilk is based out of Istanbul, Turkey. Um, I've reviewed a couple of their pens and have been very impressed with the overall quality of what they produce. And will that continue with this pen? Well, let's take a look. The pen arrives in this box, and as you can see by the film projector, the theme Camera Laterna is movies. Uh, Camera Laterna translates from Latin to mean bright room. Uh, this sleeve slides off. Yes, it does slide off. And inside we have a box. And inside the box we have a few things. There is uh, some warranty information. Then we have a use and care guide. Uh, there is a polishing cloth, which will come in handy on this pen since it contains a fair amount of sterling silver. And then we have the pen. This is the Kilk Camera Laterna. Um, it is made from resin with the aforementioned sterling silver accents. Uh, there's a lot going on with this pen. Uh, first of all, there is this resin. Um, it is a polished black and contains wisps of silver. Um, it really reminds me a lot of a black and white film, uh, maybe a film noir. There are a lot of amazing black and white films, and I, uh, I feel like shooting in black and white is a bit of a lost art form nowadays. Um, it allows filmmakers to play around a bit more with textures and lighting and depth and tone in ways that really aren't possible in color. That's not to say that black and white is better, it's just different. And it can be an important artistic element in the creation of a film. There have been some great modern films in black and white, uh, like Nebraska, uh, Good Night, Good Luck, Ed Wood, Raging Bull, uh, Roma. I can name a dozen more. Uh, in the near future, Kilk will actually be re-offering a matte black version of this pen as well. Okay, let's take a look at one of my favorite features of this pen, which is the finial. Uh, inlaid into the top of the cap is a film reel. Uh, through some of the holes, you can actually see the numbers 925 and the letter K. I thought this was a clever way of indicating the sterling silver content. Uh, and I appreciated how each of the characters lined up with the holes. Uh, now, what's even cooler about this finial is that it spins. When it spins, it's not overly loud, but what really impressed me was how long it will spin. Uh, the mechanism on the inside of the finial is just really well made. You can see here that it spins for a long time. Uh, when I'm using this pen, I can't help but spin it on a regular basis. It's a really cool fidget element of this pen. Uh, below the top of the cap, there is a rather large gap before you get to the clip. It's just a bit of a different look, uh, something that's a little bit more common on vintage pens. Uh, would I care to have all of my pens with the clip spaced out like this? No, but for a change of pace, I find it interesting. Uh, speaking of the clip, this thing is pretty neat. Uh, first of all, the clip band represents the sprockets on a film projector. Uh, those are the little teeth that you thread the film on. Uh, then we have the clip itself, which represents a flowing band of film. And, I, you know, I really love how the frames of the film are in more of like a 1.85 to 1 ratio than like a 1.33 to 1. It's little touches like that that make me feel that there was a great attention to detail on this pen and how the parts relate to the theme of this pen was well thought out. Underneath the clip, it has the stamp indicating that this is made from sterling silver. Um, now, it doesn't look it, but the tip of this clip is a bit sharp. Uh, I mean, it's not going to hurt you or anything, but it's just sharper than you really think it would be. Um, there is a medium-sized step down from the cap to the barrel, which begins with another one of my favorite features, which is the band. Uh, this represents the countdown leader found on many physical films. 
There are several different types of leaders, but the general purpose of this countdown was to show the theater projectionist how far it was until the beginning of the movie. Um, I say how far because some of the leaders indicate the number of physical feet of film that remain before the beginning of the movie. Um, other leaders indicate the number of seconds before it starts. Uh, a small detail that I really love is that on this band you can see the line moving clockwise around the number as it counts down from 5 to 0. That's another element of this pen to me that indicates there was a lot of attention to detail to this design and that it was really well thought out. Um, the barrel is straight for about an inch and a half before tapering down and straightening out for the last inch or so. Um, at the end of the barrel, it is flat. The cap twists off in just under one and a half rotations and underneath we have a Bach number no. 6 stainless steel nib. A Bach calls this their 250 nib. Um, it's engraved with the Kilk logo and available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and double broad. Uh, there's also an option for a platinum plated 14 karat gold nib. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section has a design that's uh, similar to that on the Leonardo Memento Zero models. Uh, it's a, it is a bit different though. The overall length of the section as well as the steepness of the grade from the lower to the upper the part of the section uh, differ. So like I said, they're just similar but not exactly the same. The section transitions into the threads and a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Um, I like this section design on Leonardo pens, and I care for this one as well. Um, I find it to be very ergonomic in my hand, uh, and even though there isn't a flare or a ridge to, to prevent your grip from slipping off the end of the section, I find that I can maintain a decent grip on this pen without my grip traveling at all. Uh, the pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. The cap does post, and it does post securely. Um, it has a bit of a unique posting process. The cap just kind of slides on the end of the barrel. The company describes this posting as a vacuum fitted, which makes sense when you utilize it. When you post, you can feel a slight amount of resistance. Nothing that's bothersome, but you can notice it a little bit. And if you post it with some intention, then it's secured and won't move. But if the cap is just kind of placed on the end, you can see how then it will kind of slide off. But the action is slowed down a bit by that vacuum. Uh, it's kind of interesting. And, you know, I will say that while I don't feel like posting the cap back weights the pen or throws off the balance, um, I feel that even though it posts deeply, it adds uh, kind of an inordinate amount of length to this pen, making it a bit unwieldy. Uh, with the larger amount of silver in this pen, you would think that it would be heavier than it is, but I prefer to use this pen unposted. Um, I wouldn't normally care for the extended posting portion of this barrel, but I feel the black resin does a good job of hiding that decrease in width, and I hardly even notice it. Um, if the pen was made with a brighter material, then I think it would be a little bit more visually disruptive. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, it accepts standard international cartridges, and a converter is provided. The Kilk Camera Laterna is available through the Kilk website. Um, I'll put a link to it in the notes below where you can check it out. Uh, their pens are also carried by a few retailers. I know they're currently carried by Goldspot, as well as Endless Pens. Possibly there are others. Uh, this pen retails for $300. With a gold nib, it brings the price up to $420. I feel that even with the steel nib, the $300 price is reasonable for this pen. Um, the quality of the materials is outstanding. Uh, it just feels like a really solid pen. And I love the silver trim as well. Uh, and I feel that they really executed the theme of this pen well without going over the top. Uh, on top of that, as you'll see in the writing sample, it writes very nicely as well. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Kilk Camera Laterna. Um, I want to give you another closer look at that material. I just really like the wispiness of the, uh, the silver that's in there. Uh, and the clip just looks amazing. Same with the uh, band. Uh, and then there's the finial, which as you can see, spins around here and 
it does spin for quite some time. Just the mechanism on here is really, really well made. So in regard to those size comparisons, here it is with a Visconti Homo sapiens. Uh, and then here it is with a Diplomat Arrow. And then here it is with the Mont Blanc Alfred Hitchcock with a film theme pen. How could I not bring out the Hitchcock? Here it is with a Pilot Vanishing Point. That's the Raiden water surface. And then in regard to a couple of pens from Kilk that I've reviewed, um, there is the Orient. Uh, and then we have the first one I reviewed, which was the Celestial. In regard to uncapped comparisons, um, this is what it looks like with the Homo sapiens. And this is with the Celestial. And then finally, here it is with the Alfred Hitchcock. Okay, here we go with the writing sample for the Kilk. And this is the camera. Laterna. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. Uh, and the ink that I'm using is something that uh, I, you know, was one of my favorite ink reviews that really related to film and film noir, which is Papier Plume. And this is number 13. If you haven't seen that review, I, it was a lot of fun for me to put together. Uh, Papier Plume came out with a mystery ink, so um, I couldn't show the color of the ink. So how do you do a review for an ink that you can't show the color to? So I did it in black and white in a little uh, send up of film noir films. It was a lot of fun. I'll put a link to it in the notes below. This is what the ink looks like. Um, it's kind of a darker blue green. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to Private Reserve Blue Suede. And it's very similar in color to the Monteverde Iced Cookie. This is what the bottle looks like when they sent them out and included these little masks, uh, which were really cute. And then this is what the bottle looks like, the 30 milliliter bottle. Um, it's a very nice ink if you can still find it. I believe it's sold out on their site, but if you can find it on the secondary market, it's worthwhile. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, this Bach nib writes very well. Um, you can get a little bit of line variation out of this steel nib with a little bit of pressure. Uh, I feel the ink flow is decent here. Uh, and in regard to reverse writing, It isn't overly sharp. I'd say the flow isn't quite as strong, but it does write nicely. And in regard to some fast writing, the feed keeps up just fine. So there we have the Kilk Camera Laterna. Uh, like I mentioned, that it's a really cool themed pen, which I don't feel goes over the top. Uh, and it's something that I really enjoy. I, I like the uniqueness of it. And as I had mentioned, it is a, a theme that ties into some of my personal interests. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.